Welcome back to the rest of the story. This is the first load of corn going into the new bin. The 20,000 bushel bin. I guess we don't want to call it a new bin anymore. That auger is actually maxed out as far as the height goes. Let's get to the top of this bin. So if this was any taller, we'd be in a little bit of trouble. But what I'm doing, I'm going to walk over here and see what the corn looks like coming into bend. center of the stirrator is exactly what I want. I'm going to shut this pressure door. I'm going to turn the stirrator on. It's going to start getting loud. But, a little quick recap for you guys. The other bin is full. The 10,000 bushel. This bin has a ways to go yet. Seems like we just started. We got the other bin full in just, just over 24 hours. And that's not a steady running. We started yesterday at 11. But I don't know how long it'll take to fill this bin. All depends on how the corn runs. But um, let me get this door shut and everything running. I can talk to you a little bit. You can hear that rattling from the bin. That's a grain spreader working up on top. It helps fill the bin evenly so you don't get a big cone pile in the middle of the bin. Helps it dry out a little bit more thoroughly. That's also what the stirrator is going to be for when we run that. But the wind is starting to pick up. Ryan actually had to come up and help me set this auger up. I really don't like setting these up, or at least this auger in, uh, in particular, because the wind actually picked up. And the wind actually, when that auger gets up in the air like that, it it catches the end of that auger and it starts swaying back and forth on you. And I'm just not too keen on trying to run around with these augers with it up all the way, swaying back and forth. But it's up. This is the first load of corn going into the bin. And hopefully, yields stay up or even improve. Improving is actually what we're hoping for. And... Uh, keep moving right along with harvest. They, we easily have enough storage and enough corn to combine right now that we can run for another, probably another two days yet, two full days yet. But the way this wind's blowing, I'll have to talk to you guys in the tractor. How's everybody doing? I'm doing great. And we're all doing great, actually. I don't know what yields are doing, but must be doing pretty good. We only have about a third of this place done and we already got that small 10,000 bushel bin at Brockville full. I might have filled it too full actually. I might actually have to pull probably one of these back out of it because the stirrator, uh, yeah, the stirrator has to be able to run around it. And I wasn't, well, I couldn't see back straight in from the door, but the spreader was throwing unevenly, and it's built up a little bit higher in the back of the bin compared to just inside the door, or the, uh, the door opening. So, I might have to deal with that tomorrow. But this is, I don't even know what load I'm on, but I've put two loads into that new bin so far, or the 20,000 bushel bin. Uh, the 20,000 bushel bin should be able to hold the rest of this place. Well, the rest of this farm could actually fill that 20,000 bushel bin if the yields keep improving like they have been. 
grain markets just closed. All right, now let me rephrase that. Grain markets did not close. They usually close at two. That's uh, Gavilon Grain. They send me a daily price action, what the prices are doing locally. But I'm currently waiting on Ryan. Normally, he's been back up up, uh, up on top of the hill here, so he could... I don't usually have to wait like this. This is actually the first time I've had to do this today. But with this bigger wagon, I'm actually able to keep ahead of Dad and Ryan better than I was last year. Of course, I'm hauling another 180 bushels, give or take 20 to 30 bushels, compared to previous years. But, uh, no, the reason it's so significant, like I was trying to say that this section of the farm uh, filled with that 10,000 bushel bin at Rockville, the reason that's so significant is because my place is broken up into three sections. And of the three sections, we would typically say this is the poorer, poorest ground down in my place, but I don't know. With the way we've been tweaking our system and what we're planting as far as seed varieties and fertilizer and I didn't cultivate this 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 year, but I did talk to Andrew about that row cultivator, how that actually may turn from mainly purely being used as a a weed finder and uh, a tool to aerate the soil between the crops. Um, the focus of that cultivator may actually. Be more, become more focused on um, a nutrient applicator. That liquid potash that we applied this year, we have yet to combine anything that has been treated with it yet. We haven't run through any of the Rapidity or Pacer or the Kickstand um, corn yet. Say so that'll probably be another within two weeks, I'm hoping. But Typically we, oh, we just got this farm done. Or not this farm done, we got this section done. His dad's on his way up right now. And um, the reason I'm parking up here is because this section is like a hill, basically, for the most part. And the ground is soft enough yet that when I get a decent sized load in the back here, I can't really pull it that well. I got up the first morning, yesterday morning, with a full load on the back, but I know I couldn't do it again because I tore up all the grass at our roadway. So our road is currently dirt <laughs> now. Well, now I gotta go watch this. Stay tuned. Guys, here's my progress. Sweet, our spreader's off, so I can at least check on, check on this level and climb the bend. We are officially halfway up this door. And that spreader works pretty slick. It's kind of blurry, but it's getting late. Um, it's throwing all the corn out to the very outside of the bend. It's actually got a little bit of a low spot in the center. While I'm talking to you, because I can't really talk over that spreader. But, lights are on. This is what you have to do out in the country in the fall when you got to work and uh, daylight savings time kicks in or off or whatever it does. And it gets dark at 7 o'clock at night. What you do is you make your own light. And the bin's actually got four of them all the way around it. But I'm liking the mild weather to harvest. I've had years where I've had to work overall just to haul in corn and 
I was actually, I had my sweatshirt off earlier, but the sun went down and it got cold. But everything's running just fine. This will be my last update for tonight or today's video. But the 46 is just waiting patiently. Haven't had much use to run two carts to haul in yet. Or at least using the 46 as a miniature mother bin. Because I am keeping up with Ryan for the most part. Um, doesn't help that the strips that Dad was working on or the area of the farm that Dad was working on was a lot of turning, and that's just a time killer. But, harvest is going great. That's gonna be it for tonight. Hope you guys are enjoying the harvest videos. I'll try to keep you updated as we go. So, take care, take it easy. Keep in touch.